Hello. So today we get to look at the power property of equality involving exponents. So we're going to be able to solve exponential equations after today. Uh, that would be equations involving exponents where we kind of deal with solving for x up in the exponent of equations. And it's kind of cool um, because it allows us to solve these problems that well, they look pretty fancy. So they look like some kind of advanced math and you look pretty smart when you can solve these problems. So the power property of equality, in long form it says, for any real number, b greater than zero and b not equal to one, so b is our base, if b to the x power is equal to b to the y, if and only if x is equal to y. Okay, so if I have an equation with the same base on both sides and it equals each other. So let's say five to the x power is equal to five to the third power. Well, my bases are the same. So the only way for this equation to make sense, five to what power is equal to five to the third power? Well, I know my exponent has to be the same because five to the third power is equal to five to the third power there's only one value that x can be, and that's three. So we can say, if on both sides of an equation, I have the same base, and they are equal, I can say the exponents must be equal. Now before delving further into a couple equations and solving them, uh, I wanna take a quick look at these things here. It says b has to be greater than zero, and b not equal to one. This is a thing where I think a lot of times when we see these fancy definitions and theorems, we just want to kind of skip over that part because it's all just complicated math stuff. Let's get right, right down to the meat of it. B to the X equals B to the Y if and only if X equals Y. And then just kind of ignore the rest. Um, but I encourage you not to do that. Um, when you're looking with a mathematical mind, these things up front, the conditions, they have a lot of meaning in them. And it's kind of interesting to look at them and wonder, well, why do we put them? The first one for b greater than zero. So my base has to be greater than zero. So that's saying I can't have a base of a negative number. And why that? Well, on the surface, you might have negative three to the third power is equal to negative three to the x and you say, okay, well, clearly x has to equal three, but my base is negative, so what's the issue here? Well, there's not really an issue here, but the deeper thing here of why b cannot be um, less than zero, a negative number, it has to do with something involving logarithms and exponentials, a further thing that we're not gonna look at now. So to answer why b greater than zero, um, we can't really say because on the surface level it looks well here, but we'll see that's a problem having b be negative when we talk about logarithms sometime in the future. But this one, b can't be equal to one. Why not? One's a nice number. What's so innocuous about that? Look at this. If one is to the sixth power and that equals one to the x power, well, x can equal 6, right? Because 1 to the 6th is equal to 1 to the 6th. But couldn't, couldn't it be true that x is equal to 7? Because 1 to the 6th is also equal to 1 to the 7th. Because remember, 1 to any power is just 1. 1 equals 1 here. Multiply 1 by itself 100 times and it's still 1. So if b is equal to 1, these two right here do not necessarily equal each other. It can be one to the sixth equal one to the twelfth. One to the sixth equal one to the 212th. Okay, so if the base is one, we run into problems. All right, that little aside, some good math thinking, always good for us. Keep that in mind, the conditions are an important thing. All right, let's solve some problems now. 60x equals six to the two x minus one. Check, are my bases the same? Sure are, that means the exponents have to equal each other. So I set up this equation, x equals two x minus one, and now we just solve for x. So I'll add one to both sides, and I'll subtract x. And I get one is equal to x, and I solved it. 
plug that back in to check, check it. 6 to the first power is equal to 6 times 2 minus 1. 6 to the first power is equal to 6 to the 1. 6 is equal to 6. Check. Got it. Moving on to problem 2. 60x is equal to 216. And here's where the problems get a little tricky because we're like, well, the bases aren't the same. I have 6 and 216. So I can't solve this equation because the exponents are only equal if the bases are the same. But I can take a look and see, can I change either side to make the bases the same? That is, can I rewrite either number such that it is a base of 6? And this is where being familiar with numbers um, and your powers is useful because 216, that is actually 6 to the third power. 6 times 6 is 36 and then times 6 is 216. So I rewrite 216 as 6 to the third power. Now my bases are the same. That means the exponents must be equal, and x equals 3. Hmm. Okay. We can make it a little trickier, though. Of course. Of course we can. 25 to the x minus 1 power is equal to 5. Bases are not the same. However, can I rewrite one or the other? or maybe both, to make the bases the same. We should see this. 25, well that's 5 squared. And here's where you're careful. Because it's 5 squared being taken to the x minus 1 power. That means, okay, so 25 got rewritten as 5 squared. But now remember your power property. When you're taking a power to a power, you multiply. So this is 5 times 2x minus 2. Notice how I distributed in that 2 and multiplied to both of them. Real important to distribute that multiplication there. Now my bases are the same, so I can say the exponents must be equal. And I solve for x, add 2 to both sides. Now I'll divide by 2. x is equal to 3 halves. Okay. So we can do it there. And once again, you can plug this right back in here. Check it out, and you should get the right answer. You should get the left equal to the right. I encourage you to do that. Um, let's try one more problem here. 16 to the 2x minus 1 power is equal to 8. This is going to be our most challenging type of these exponential equations. So can I write either one of those such that the bases are the same? I can't say 8 squared. I mean, that's 64. I, I, I don't want to do that. So you kind of want to use like a, a smaller base and see, can I raise that to be the number? Like 8, 2 to the third power. So maybe that. Because 16, um, like is there an 8 hidden in there? Not really. 2 times 8. Or sorry, 2 times 8 is 16. But I'm not caring about multiplication. I need to raise some number to a power to get 8. Here's where it gets real nifty if you can recognize it. 16, well that is 2 to the 4th power, to the 2x minus 1, and 8 is 2 to the 3rd power, as I said earlier. So I just transform both sides to have the same base of 2. And now I will distribute this in, so it's 2 to the 8x minus 4 power is equal to 2 to the 3rd power. Bases are the same, that means the exponents must be equal. 8x minus 4 equals 3. I will solve for x. Okay, now I divide both sides by 8. x is equal to 7 ace. Plug that in, and it should make the left equal to the right. So the power property of equality here says if we can make the bases the same on either sides of an equal sign, the exponents must equal each other. The skill here is recognizing what numbers are powers of other numbers, such as 8, 16, 32, 64, going on like that, um, 2, 16, 27, 81, 81 is 3 to the 4th power. So being able to recognize that really helps with these problems.